Gator Framework Studio in Music City. It's the Dining at Disney podcast. To bring these folks together, all walks of life. You'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Dining at Disney Podcast. Welcome to the Dining at Disney Podcast. I'm Kat, experiential producer, film historian. Uh, you know, just getting by. We're we're getting through it. <laughs> uh, I am joined by Aljon. Oh, hello, Aljon. Go, lifelong Disney Marvel Star Wars fan. Love the parks. Love the Disney food podcaster, and I am also a big fan of Hawaiian shirts. For two weeks in a row, uh, it, I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> it's flamingo. Whatever day today is. You know what the cool thing is, is that uh, Jimmy Buffett is my spirit animal. Yes. So I just long to uh, live that cheeseburger in paradise 24-7. I support you. Uh, I, I'm glad you do. Every time I wear a Hawaiian shirt into work, everybody's like, wow, that's really cool. You're wearing pink or you're wearing blue. I'm like, it's me. This is who I am. I am the Kevin Smith of the guitar world. You know, he goes in, he rocks the, the sports coat and, and, and the freaking, uh, uh, you know, hockey hockey jersey. Jersey. Yeah. and, you know, I rock, I walk in and I look like the dude from Jurassic Park, right? It's, a... I love it. it's perfect. <laughs> I'm John, I don't know if you saw on my Instagram, but like a couple weeks ago, me and my movie club all dressed up as grannies and had lunch at Margaritaville. That's yes. And oh. yeah, so I fully support the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle. You know, fully. It's the way to do it. It really is a, um, you know, th- that's that's really the most comfortable thing in my wardrobe for me at this point in the game, other than wearing just a, you know, your typical rock band or Disney t-shirt, you know, if I want to kick it up a little bit, show a little bit of flair, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rock the Hawaiian shirt, you know. It's perfect. <laughs> We've got a bunch of uh, Disney news for you. You know, yeah, we do. Last, last week, it's just been tidbit after tidbit after tidbit. It is a little bit of the summer doldrums, if you will, uh, leading up to the big foodie events and the holiday season at the Disney Park. At, uh, at the Disney Park. So this is just where we're at right now. And then, of course, yeah. it's going to be, you know, next week, it'll probably be foodie guide after foodie guide after foodie guide after foodie guide now that we're going to be breaking down for for everybody yeah i i think we'll probably get those food and wine festival foodie guides pretty yeah. soon and of course in the next couple of weeks we'll have more news than we know what to do with because d23 is coming up this is true and we typically break down the announcements of d23 over a course uh, of a couple shows yes and there should be a lot of great news there should be a lot of great news from uh the San Diego Comic Con um, that, as you listen to this, it just ha- it happened over the weekend. But as we yes. record this, is beforehand, you know, because we record two shows a weekend the same night, and uh, yeah, so it should be it should be pretty cool because you're going to be hearing this on a Monday, but we're recording it on a Thursday. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, if we have any breaking news, I'm sure you'll you'll hear about it maybe um, on Skull Rock. On, on uh, we record Skull Rock on Sunday, and you hear it on Monday morning. So I'm sure we're going to have a ton of news for sure on there. But anyway, well, I guess. What are you hoping to hear? What I, I, well, make I, some predictions for me, Aljun. Well, park news, park news wise, I hope that there's more announcements for um, what's going on at Animal Kingdom in terms of new attractions and Kanto, um, you know, whatever kind of uh, evil kingdom, villains kingdom, they're going to uh, kind of further uh, kind of refine and announce. So that's that's part of that. I'm also hearing rumbles of the people mover coming back to Disneyland. Oh, interesting. Now, I may be completely off base, but I just hear rumblings of that. You know, the the kinetic movement and the structure of Tomorrowland, because you're an experiential producer, you're a big fan of Imagineering like I am, yep. has been lacking so much since, you know, that the Rockets 
kind of shuddered and that part of that movement whether it was the skyway and the people mover just gave tomorrowland that that energy that tomorrowland needed and right now it's just lacking that and, but how do you how do you refurbish something that expansive over an entire land without disrupting everything right yeah i feel like if they're gonna put something that integral into the framework into that area again there's gonna have to be a lot of work done and it's gonna it's gonna involve a lot of cl closings in that area if that happens i don't think we'll see it for a while at least not until we get an opening date for tiana's which we don't have at this point um just because that whole side of the park is construction walls now yeah so yeah. if, if if they renounce it, it's it's going to be like a twenty twenty eight. I would say realistically, which which means that it might even change because yeah, you know Disney. They tease things, but when they announce things, uh, the, the tease is one thing. If you know and you set up your expectations to be like this is a tease or it's concept art, you know it's it's a different situation things do change like future future world at epcot mm -hmm. pre-pandemic there were big ideas huge ideas and what we got was maybe 75 percent, maybe of what they they really wanted to accomplish knowing that there's another anniversary of epcot coming another d23 coming they could make good right mm -hmm. they can because when when they lock it in they lock it in and then they go but having the ability to scale back and say, look, this is great, but I think we can save this for a future phase and make it even better and speak more and be more relevant to whatever the times are. Um, that's fine. You know? So that's the trap that Disney falls in mm -hmm. uh, with that because they make these announcements and it's like that for the film slate as well. I feel like uh, then my next prediction is of course, announcing the next phases of the marvel cinematic universe and the next evolution of the star wars franchise whatever that uh, whatever form that takes um i think a lot of fans and people lose track of the fact that we have more content coming whether you know you're a fan of it or not it doesn't really matter um like what you like don't like what you don't like yeah. I tell you that I'd much rather have the content than have no content. Agree. At least some of the people you can't please uh, everyone all the time, but I am a big fan of this uh you know some of the live action stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing Mandalorian a live action on the big screen. I'm looking forward to seeing uh anything they do with the old republic. I'm I'm cool with more animation and more seasons of the Clone Wars if they decide to go that route. Um animated adventures during the era of Luke, Han, and Leia because there are so many more stories to be told there. Comic books have done a phenomenal job. Yes. And if you don't read the comics, my gosh, what are you, I mean, the comics are great. So I expect, and why not turn those comics and adapt them, um, that canon into animated stuff? Because I want to know about all that other stuff and i don't read every comic but i've read a lot and my gosh you know whether it's the lando comic or whether it's the vader comic which is amazing like yes. uh, live action doc afra all day long come on so freaking awesome <laughs> you know agree and more of the mandalorian you know mm -hmm. more, more of ahsoka tano more about the war world between worlds more about falcon and winter soldier i can't wait to see that i can't wait to see what the cinematic universe and marvel has got in store for us and um secret wars it's uh you know i am a huge fan of the beyonder era in the mm -hmm. 80s when my fandom kind of came together um as a kid going into the grocery store and into the 7-eleven by my grandmother's house and picking up spider-man books you know picking up um claremont x-men and picking up all this stuff you know dazzler i read dazzler a lot growing up um and Spider-Man, of course, and the X-Men, X-Force. So the, it, I'm, I'm a geek like you, Kat. I, <laughs> you know, we love it. We love all of it. It's cool. Yeah, definitely. I I don't know if it's going to happen this weekend or if it will happen in two weeks, Come this 
coming up at D23. But I am very interested to hear how much or how little Mr. Feige talks about Kang. With the Kang debacle and the storytelling going or having to go in a different direction, I'm very interested to see how they play it, what they talk about, if they ignore it, if they announce how they're pivoting. I'm very interested to see how it's handled because in 2022, when we were all at D23 at this time of year, it was all about Kang. Everybody was still on the Jonathan Majors train. And now that that's not the case anymore, I'm very interested to hear how they think they're going to move forward. Do I think that this weekend and if on Monday we drop this podcast and I'm totally wrong, you know, like come for me on social media, like I'm fine with that. Um, I have a very good feeling that they're going to be showing uh, at least a sizzle of uh, what's happening with Fantastic Four. If Pedro is not there, I will be shocked. <laughs> Um, I have, you know, I have high hopes that they're going to probably show at least a portion of Agatha. Oh yeah. To the, to the crowd there. Uh, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we'll get some news about Blade. Yeah. Cause I've been waiting for Blade news for months now. It feels like. And so many changes behind the scenes for that. Yeah. It's nuts. It's just insane. It's insane. Yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't be mad if Sweet Baby Angel, Danny Hernandez, <laughs> and, Ameri- and, and American National Treasure, Anthony Mackey, yes. showed up to give us a little Falcon, a Falcon uh, I mean, Captain America, Brave New World, or whatever they're calling it now. Yeah, that's right. And I, I feel very good about predicting they're going to tell everyone what that little asterisk at the end of Thunderbolts means. Dark Avengers, here they come. I think it's the Thunderbolts part one. Uh, it could very well be. Yeah. So we'll see, but it's a lot. There's a lot happening and we're going to get a lot of news and I'm sure we'll cover it a little bit this coming week and a lot of it after D23. Oh. Disney, give me my media pass, please. Please, <laughs> Bruce, your email was so polite. Please, please. They're waiting to the last moment. <laughs> they truly are. They, they're just keeping everybody. I, I guarantee they do that. They don't do that for uh, for other people. You know, I was gonna say John Caponera, but you know what? He's on the outs with Disney, so let's not talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all the. Oh. Beyond the trailer might be there. You might be seeing Beyond the trailer. She might be there, and and I just I just saw her um her take on on Wolverine, and Deadpool, and uh, I, I'm it's great. It's always nice to see the film reviewers so psyched like we are yes. comic book fans. Ooh. I, I have Juju's videos like queued up, ready to watch after I see the movie this weekend. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm I re- love shouts to Straw Hat, Goofy, Juju Green, you are king. Never stop. I watch. I watch. Uh, I watch. Um, uh, 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 the um, uh, film uh, film crush. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Airy and yeah. and film crush. I love that. I love um, uh, who else do I watch? Um, uh, several others. I mean, obviously Kevin Smith is going to watch it, and I can't wait to see Kevin Smith uh, talk about it. Yeah, but um, he's probably going to cry as Kevin Smith does all the time during Marvel premieres these days. Same. Yeah, who doesn't though? Who doesn't? For real. Uh, we will talk about food ultimately. Let's do uh, it. Program. Cat, where are we going first? Well, let's talk about some menu updates, shall we? Let's. Some of them are new, some of them are not new, but all the same. Uh starting over at Epcot, uh Joffrey's near Canada has added the added the iced pistachio latte, which is delicious, and the salted caramel mudslide cold brew. And so has the Joffrey's near the American Adventure. And okay, so all the Joffreys have this now. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Love it. I know pistachio latte was only at one of them for a while, but I'm glad that they expanded it because that thing is delicious. Yeah. 
Um, Artisan de Glace, we talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago. They've added flavored cones, lavender, and red velvet. Um, over at Animal Kingdom, Creature Comforts has removed the roast beef wrap sandwich. Flame Tree Barbecue has removed the bug and grubs cupcake and the bug shaped graham crackers. <laughs> Thank goodness. Ooh. Isle of Java, they've removed their muffin and s'mores and hot cocoa, but they've added a Vietnamese iced coffee. Whoa. I love me a ice, Vietnamese iced coffee. That sounds delightful. Right on. Pizza Fari has removed their iridescent firefly, which I assume is a drink. Okay. Mm. Terra Treats has added a Disney dining plan symbol to their barbecue chicken pizza. Lovely. They've also removed their Thai sweet chili glazed pork pizza and the overnight oats at breakfast time. And, of course, all of the prices here have been increased. Feeding Ground has also increased their prices and removed Heineken from their menu. The Nomad Lounge, one of our favorites, has added Korean Impossible Meatballs. And Cuban Frita Sliders. Sounds delicious to me. Tiffin's has removed the Lamb Merguez Stuffed Medijual Dates. Quality Beverages has added a Sailfish Seasonal Sailfish White Marlin Whit Beer. Mr. Kamal's, Mr. Kamal's can't win. A, they can't win a fight over there, Mr. Kamal's. <laughs> They've removed hummus from their menu. Uh, um, the Anandapur ice cream truck has removed their bugs and grubs, the Hitachino Nest, Tiger Pale Lager, and Mackenzie's Black Cherry Hard Cider Float. Caravan Road has had price increases, and they've added available with vodka pricing to their Cocky Glory offering. Thirsty River Bar and Trek Snacks has had a price increase. Eldon, do you want to tell us what's happening at Disney Springs? Sure. I can tell you about Disney Springs as soon as I scroll and get there. Oh, yes. So over at Disney Springs, they over at Paddlefish, they've, of course, increased prices, as they do. But they've also added sausage, peppers, grilled octopus, Crispy chicken sandwich. Am I reading that correctly? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Of uh, the Florida Mule, which is nice. Key Lime Spritz. Kayla's Rock and Roll Hurricane. Over there at the basket, they've added a Florida Frojito. That sounds yummy. Yes. Over at Wetzel's Pretzels, they've added an Orange Dream. And I don't know what that is, but I can only imagine it's some kind of slushy. Yeah, I think it's the like the orange cream oh, thing orange that they're cream doing. Cream thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh let's see here. At Jock Lindsay's hangar bar, they've removed the spaced a space blood orange cider. And over at the poutine, the daily poutine gourmet, they've added a sunshine stroll orange pilsner. Sounds fresh. I like it. Mm. BB, BB Wolf's, they've added a Sunshine Stroller Pilsner. Over at the Boathouse, they removed the Blackberry Cheesecake. And over at the Resort Hotels of Walt Disney World, they've removed a bunch of stuff from the uh, Premier Food Court. Lemon meringue croissant, strawberry milk, vitamin water, soup of the day, Greek island with shrimp, Caesar salad with shrimp, ham and cheese kids pack, and Mickey Brownie sundae. And they've added a moho roasted chicken sounds good mm. it's funny they removed vitamin water i guess uh, maybe their contract ran out i don't know they sold smart water it's the same company yeah same company it's weird mm. i guess it's just not selling uh over at the uh, center town market they removed the caribbean plant-based sausage black beans and rice bowl so two two different things there california grill they've removed the spicy Cajun roll the wagyu surf and turf roll the Cascade Roll, Rapini Pizza, Meat Salad, Campeche Crudo, Pinoli Herb Crusted Lamb, and the Corn and Mushroom Mazula. Mazaluna. Mazaluna. 
There you go. I can say it. And they've added these other uh, rolls as well. Surf and turf roll. They've added the farmer's market salad. Pork lechon, my personal favorite. Mm. The poor lion's main roll. Herb crusted Oregon lamb. Corn and summer squash. Mezzaluna. And over there at Disneyland Resort, Cat, what do they have? Yeah. Um, well, price increases. Maurice's <laughs> Treats, we've had some price increases. Refreshment Corner, some price increases. Jolly Holiday, Tiana's Palace, Cat Saka's Kettle, Rancho del Zocalo, Fillmore's Tasting, Corn Dog Castle, Hollywood Lounge, all have price increases. Uh, also, Jack Jack Cookie Num Nums. Schmoozies. <laughs> um, Clarabelle's hand scooped ice cream, but they've also added the Mickey's ice cream truck and ice cream truck Sunday. Hey, which is so cute. I love the ice cream truck. Once oh, it's so another, cute. But if you go, you know, I know you can't eat ice cream, can you? But you know, I want it. The mom wants it too, honestly. Pretty dope. Um, okay, so that's all the increases, but over at Ballast Point, they've added a sourdough pretzel, steak nachos, fried calamari, a BP burger, fried chicken sandwich, birria queso tacos, New York cheesecake, chocolate mousse, and a guava mango flute. I tell you, they, yeah, I'm sorry, Ballast Point is one of my favorite places. Yeah, they've got a lot of stuff going on over there. That. They've removed the pretzel sticks, the steak and eggs, ahi poke, honey miso chicken sandwich, blackened fish tacos, poblano mac and cheese, and raspberry panna cotta. And it's not on this list that I have here, but starting July 26th, so already if you're listening to this on the day it's released, you can get a chimichanga over at Pim's Test Kitchen in honor of Deadpool. Chimichangas. I love chimichangas. Chimichanga. It's seasoned beef, charred poblano, refried beans, and shredded cheese on a pool of guajillo sauce with pico de gallo side salad. It's $13.99. It's available starting the 26th, and you can enjoy it before or after you meet Deadpool while he starts making appearances at Disneyland California Adventure. So exciting. Maximum effort. So good. Love it. I love the fact that they're just doubling and tripling down on the content. And by golly, who doesn't want to get their picture with Deadpool, the Merc with a mouth? I love it so much. So good. Oh, man, I love it. Um, So, so excited. So, have you seen the Country Bear Musical Jamboree revamp yet? No, I'm not watching it. I want to see it in person for the first time. Okay. I've heard it's very sad. It's different. <laughs> hey look man I'm a big fan of Shakira I'm a big fan of Shakira and I'm a big fan of the Country Bears I j it'll take some getting used to Ugh. it's just going to take some getting used to Um, and it's just because the iconic Country Bear Jamboree is so classical Disney stinking awesome like I love Country Bear Jamboree it is a must do for Kristen and I every time we go there. I love Big L, love everything, blood on the saddle, the whole nine. Love it. However, you know, they do have the refurbishment, the the brand new musical numbers as the country bears sing the new newer hits from the Disney catalog of songs and soundtracks. Great. But of course, over there at Disneyland, it hasn't really manifested in anything yet however mm -hmm. the country bears no longer play their jamboree at disneyland they will be featured of course in walt's original park coming to you soon and you're going to find some of their old favorite food and showcase at their reimagined restaurant how excited are you about this i'm so excited one of my favorite things to do um obviously not right now because they're closed but uh in the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh in one of the rooms, if you look backwards over your shoulder, you can see some of the heads that used to be on the wall at Grizzly Hall are in the ride. Obviously not operational, but there as a tribute because Winnie the Pooh took the place of Country Bear Jamboree at Disneyland and bringing them and giving them a new home over there, even as small as it is, uh, feels really, really special. That's awesome. Yeah. So I never knew never knew that. 
You but, didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. I just didn't. Oh, yeah. I hadn't even looked for it, to be quite honest. It's um, so cool. That is cool. That is really cool. Yeah, it's one of the like one of the things that just went over my head for whatever reason. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as you alluded to, uh, Hungry Bear is closed right now for refurbishments. But uh, over there in Critter Country, it's going to be getting a new name, Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree, and will feature aspects of the country bears. And that's great. Disney has shared that, quote, you'll find bears' favorite barbecue food and re-themed restaurant while you enjoy your meal to the soundtrack of their greatest hits. This could mean that new songs featured in the new song at Walt, uh, the new attraction of Walt Disney World will be the tunes you'll hear in the new restaurant at Disneyland. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. So, I mean, why not? Right. So, unfortunately, Disney stated that while you'll get to enjoy the bear's favorite food and music, this restaurant will not be a character meal, so you won't get to meet the famous bears themselves. And that's a shame. However, however, they're still walking around characters. So I'm hoping that maybe there'll be a little bit of a meet and greet opportunity down the road. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to see what they have on the menu here. And if they change it up a little bit from burgers and chicken tendies. Yeah. Uh, You know, they can try harder. You know, it's okay. I mean, let's let's do it. Let's give them something unique, you know, to match the theming. That's what I say. Yeah. That's what I say. Anyway, what do I know? I'm just a, I'm just a whatever. I'm just a casual observer. <laughs> some sometime participant. Uh, but I tell you what I am crazy about travel deals. Um, at, you're, you're a, you're a world traveler <laughs> and I say Disney world traveler Yeah. and Disneyland traveler. Mm. You got some trips coming up. Um, you know, my next trip is probably, to Disneyland will be in the next few weeks, undoubtedly. Um, to Orlando will be March. Okay. Well, that's exciting. It's really yeah. exciting. Uh, so having said that, we've got a travel deal for our friends there as my music bed runs in a loop. You can save on select rooms at the Walt Disney World Resort this fall and holiday season. Some of the best times to go, in my opinion. I'm trying to tell Kristen we need to go for the holidays and bring the kiddos. Uh, you can save up to 30% on rooms for stays most nights, November 24th through December 25th, a very small window. And you can enjoy other savings as well, Sunday through Thursday nights from October 6th through November 21st, another small window of opportunity. Plus, get this, free park hopper benefits when you take advantage of this offer and upgrade to a Walt Disney World Resort package that includes a four-day or longer park hopper benefit, right? You can visit multiple parks each day of your choice uh, with this particular ticket, which we love the park hopper, the flexibility it offers. But the great news is you can do that and save up to 30%. Now, what type of resorts can you save thirty up to 30%? Boardwalk in. Contemporary Resort, Coronado Springs, Old Key West, Riviera, Port Orleans, Yacht Club, Wilderness Club. The list goes on and on. Of course, Animal Kingdom Lodge, one of my favorites, right? So make sure you you book within those windows. And I tell you what, instead of booking yourself and having to deal with the hassles, have Kristen do it. She's got the inside track. She has been to the parks hundreds and hundreds of times, and she can put that knowledge to good use for you and your family. Because if you book with Disney, that's great. But... If there's other opportunities for you to save money, they're not going to be able to do that for you. Kristen will. She'll find ways to save you money so you can spend more time at the park, so you can spend more time and spend more at the restaurants and with merchandise, right? And not only that, she'll also find you great deals on the Universal uh, theme parks as well. You know, Epic Universe is happening. Um kind of dominating the news for Universal Orlando, which is great. Halloween Horror Nights, the hard ticket event is just right around the corner. And of course, everyone's loving what's going on. Kung, uh, Kung Fu Panda, Trolls, Shrek, uh, the Minions, of course, DreamWorks Land. It's going to be a lot of fun. So go ahead and book this really good uh, good time, which is a Florida Unlimited Day Park ticket at Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure for a limited number of days now through December 18th. It's going to be huge. It's only 200 bucks. An amazing plan. Of course, that doesn't include Halloween Horror Nights, but it's just a, a really cool deal. So uh, take advantage of that. Book your next Disney cruise or Carnival cruise. 
all kinds of cruise lines with Kristen by emailing her at themeparksandcruises at gmail.com. That's themeparksandcruises at gmail.com. All right, Kat, what do we have coming up next? Well, there is some limited time magic happening around D23. Um, the weekend of August 8th through the 11th happening over at the Disneyland Resort. Mm. Um, so let's jump in and talk about some of the offerings, starting with the first ever D23 day at Disneyland Resort on August 8th. Okay. So if you are a guest with a valid theme park admission reservation, of course, and including... D23 fan club members and D23 event attendees, you are invited to the celebration. Hey. Um, <clears throat> so this takes place on the 8th, which is before the convention actually starts on the 9th, but beginning at park opening, a limited quantity of complimentary Mickey Mouse ear hats featuring the D23 day at Disneyland Resort logo will be handed to guests entering Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure. So that's the first thing. And then the ultimate kickoff party will be held with a themed cavalcade at 1215 at Disneyland featuring the Disneyland band, of course, and some familiar friends. And you'll spot 23 characters and select Disney legends who have been re recognized for their impact and contributions to the Disney legacy. Who's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, Al John? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one big, big name uh, on that list. I've got a list coming up right now. Yeah. And uh, well, well, let's start. Let's start with the queen herself, Miss Angela Bassett. Oh, that's right. We talked about this. Yes, Miss Angela Bassett. Yes, Angela Bassett's going to be there. Uh, yes. So Colleen Atwood, who is a fantastical costume designer. Yes. Or... Miss Martha Blanding. Yes. The first ever full-time black tour guide. Yes. She's amazing. And acclaimed character-driven writer uh, for broadcast news and more, James L. Brooks, uh, who is a fantastic uh, screenwriter for TV and film. Mm -hmm. One of the largest names in entertainment, James Cameron's going to be there being in That's right legend a scream queen herself jamie lee curtis the original mm -hmm. miss uh hannah montana miley cyrus i'm i'm looking forward to this <laughs> yes steve ditko r.i.p yes steve ditko of course the co-creator of uh spider-man as well as uh dr strange mm -hmm. Fighting. and how about this the president himself uh, Thunderbolt Ross, Harrison Ford, and Han Solo, of course. Let's not forget. That's right. And. And. Mark Henn. Oh, yes, yes, Mark Henn, who's been we on. We love Mark Henn. Before. Yep, we love Mark yeah. Henn. Of course, uh, known for uh, leading the way during the Disney Renaissance. So. Yes. Mr. Frank Oz. Yep. I'll of let course. You, of course. A Muppets legend, a Star Wars legend. I'll let you take it because I'm going to let Kristen in. She's here. Okay, do it. Um, Kelly Ripa, who we love from her morning show, and two people who are near and dear to my heart, Mr. John Williams, whose career has spanned more than six decades. He's composed for all of the Star Wars films, and he's been nominated for the Academy Awards 54 times. But most importantly... The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Joe Rohde is getting inducted into the Legends Hall this year. So I think we could probably see one or more of these very respectable, very important people to us, to me personally, um, in this cavalcade, which would be really, really special if you're at Disney for D23 Day, of course. That is exciting. I mean, yes. that is a huge list of you know we we people tend to throw around the term legend but when you're a disney legend it's different di it's different it just hits different yes it's so real and this so class real. is completely legendary 
in so many different ways. Truly. And the fact that they're giving people like Mark Han and Joe Rohde and John Williams their flowers. Mm-hmm. And Martha. Don't forget Martha. Oh, we can't forget. I mean, the whole <laughs> class is so the whole class is so deserving. Yes, absolutely. It's so it's going to be a really special one this year, I think. Um, especially with the passing of John Landau, I think that's going to be really emotional for James Cameron to be a part of this this year. Oh, yes. And, if, and as you mentioned, Martha, too, just because, mm-hmm. I mean, you're looking at someone that's dedicated their whole life into um, the the joy of others. Yep. You know, which is the cast member's number one role. And of course, um, you know, it's great. So we celebrate that. We celebrate the Queen Angela Bassett, so many others. This is just a really really great class and i wish i could be there because that is really my favorite time at the d23 expo is the legend ceremony that's so special hi Kristen. yeah that deserves some applause she's back and now i got her mic working now she can talk hey Hey, uh, show show Kat the shirt you're wearing today. Oh yes, I I am wearing uh your favorite cat cat. Yeah, Cap. <laughs> She's uh looking forward to the Captain and Winter Soul, the Captain America, New World Order, Brave New World, whatever. <laughs> you say I'm like you've changed it so many times. <laughs> uh, you know, Captain America and the Serpent Society. You know, whatever. Ten years to when they announced the film. <laughs> seemingly <laughs> um no the d23 expo is great and um, we're certainly going to be missing out definitely it's not on comic-con but we're going to say we're missing out on d23 expo we're just missing out on you cat we're just miss hanging out with you i, visit. I know I visit. my parents just totally flaked out on coming to see me this year so oh well but <clears throat> regardless, let's jump back into this D23 day because there's so many more things to talk about. Yes, let's. So you may encounter some limited time character appearances, Max from the Groove Troop at Toontown or yes. Lotso Huggin from Toy Story 3 at Pixar Pier. It could be anybody. I have a feeling we're going to see some really special cast appearances this day. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Give us the panda may meet and greet. Disney, give oh, it to us. Please. Give us <laughs> Panda May. We know you have her. Give her to us. Four Town, baby. Oh my yes. God. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I can't imagine our kids if they saw if they saw um if they saw the Turning Red characters there, they would freak out. She would. She, I mean, she. I mean, well, anyway, it's nuts. They I love would lose it. They love Turning Red. Anyway. Um, well, speaking of dance, dance moves, because Four Town obviously has them, and so does Panda May, but Tomorrowland Terrace <laughs> is going to turn into a stitch dance party with other Disney friends and from one to six uh, on that day. And then in between the hours of seven to 11 p.m., the musical group Suburban Legends will be playing sets. Oh, well, this one, like, honestly... I don't even know if I can talk about this. Okay. I might get too emotional. Okay. It's the 25th anniversary of Disney animated studios film Tarzan. Yes. With the most incredible soundtrack by Phil Collins. That's yes. right. My it's man. incredible. The kids have been into that lately. That's oh my God. Her. I can tell you they- that uh, you'll be in my heart is probably one of the most well-crafted pop songs of all time. It's incredible. It makes me cry literally every time I hear it. It's like it hard. It like I could feel the tears welling up when I hear it. So I almost try to avoid listening to it because yeah. I know that it's going to bring that out of me. It's just I feel like if you know Phil Collins is such a, a brilliant songwriter that that is like one of the best lullabies that could ever be written. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway. Well, in honor of this incredible anniversary, the Tarzan collection will be available at Disneyana, at Disneyland, off the page at Disney California Adventure, and Wonderground Gallery at Downtown Disney. It looks like it features a Tarzan spirit jersey and a Tarzan lounge fly and maybe Tarzan ears. 
the back of some Tarzan ears is in this photo. Maybe there yeah. is a reveal coming. Yeah. But yeah, coming. super cute. I love how they embrace the fact that it looks like merch that they released 25 years ago. Yes. <laughs> it really does. It looks like so, it went back into a time machine and went back to Animal Kingdom. And there it is. There's the merch right there. The all over Tarzan print. Give it to us, please. Yes. And the, I, bi- the big I green like lettering. The, I like the fact that it's green. You don't see a lot of like that kind of like Kelly green merch. Yeah. Just- in general and i love it it's it's true yeah true looks awesome yes and this is not for a couple weeks still so i'm sure this is just the first of many announcements of march that's coming um so if we hear anything we'll absolutely update you but on top of that release from august 8th to 11th collectors will be able to search for four new medallions featuring the D23 day at Disneyland Resort logo on one side and Disneyland Resort artwork on the other. The machines to purchase these are located at Candy Palace and Candy Kitchen at Disneyland Kingswell Shop at Disney California Adventure and near the Downtown Disney Live Stage and Lawn at Downtown Disney. So lots to search for if Sorry. you're if you're visiting the park those days. Yes. All right. Um Oh, well, as part of the festivities, all park guests with valid park admission for theme and theme park reservation, of course, on August 8th, will receive complimentary unlimited digital downloads of Disney PhotoPass photos taken that day. I wonder why. That's wild. They're going to win social media as Mm -hmm. they do. (laughs) Celebrity. Tory offerings will include unique photo locations, illusion art installations at California Adventure and Downtown Disney, and collectible memorative guide with 23 recommended activities and details to discover. <laughs> hmm. I just think about D23 and me, the new D- Disney DNA test. <laughs> right. What Disney character are you? I'm 87% oh. Zazu from The Lion King. I was gonna say, Altron is the alien from Alien Encounter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, someone tell me about Disney <laughs> Junior. You know, that's what we should do one time. We should come up with like a D twenty three and me <laughs> test. If there was like a D twenty three and me, <gasps> what characters would you be? I think. I think that that we should come up with what we think characters make up us do it let's do it i'm in you like the myers brig test you know are you an infd whatever letters stand yes. for personality traits enfj whatever anyway okay that's enough about me and psychology um no now i'm trying to figure out i can't remember what the name of that alien is and it's trying it's driving me nuts well, for alien for what from alien encounter from alien encounter Oh, I don't know, but it's like the cutest. Skippy, it. Skippy, That's a, yes. Skippy. I'll be Skippy the alien, not the not the one that like spits on you. Yeah, see, I was when you <laughs> both. It's like, was there a name for that creepy alien? Not thinking like the cute the little cute one, little alien. Yes, yeah, the prototype stitch. Oh yeah, the I love type stitch. I loved Skippy. Skippy's the best. Oh, anyway, too bad he gets barbecued. Anyway, you know what? The, um... But you know what? Skippy should. <laughs> Skippy should uh, make a comeback and be in Guardians of the Galaxy in the Tevan. Oh, uh, right. That's, yes. That's where they should put him. Your oh, put on your Imagineer caps and bring Skippy back and put him in one of those test tubes. Ugh, I would email, ugh. email Disney saying an bring hey, look, back. Bring back Skippy at D23 and put him in a test tube right there at the Tavon um, exhibit. Collection, yes. Back with, do it. I love it. Yes. Anyway. Somebody tell me about Disney Junior. Disney Junior has got characters. They're going to be Disney Junior Let's Play Party at DCA August 8th. And there they can laugh, sing, dance together with the brand new Disney characters. And I knew that they were going to do this and they're finally doing it. They're going to be doing Disney Junior's Ariel. Um, Once again, it's a different depiction of Ariel people may not know about, but the cartoon is super cute and our kids like it. So there you go. Um, Also, they have Mickey Mouse Funhouse and another one of our kids' favorites, 
because they're all Disney Junior kids, is Super Kitties. I love Super Kitties. Super Kitties. Kitties. It's awesome. So uh, they have a bunch of new um, new characters there. That's right. Bitsy. Uh, At 1030, the parade route, 1030 in the a.m., of course, because if you're there at night, there will be no parade. Um, There will be a parade (laughs) route at Disney's California Adventure that I make you spit your drink. No. Um, I'm just. It'll be held with music and fun as iconic Disney friends, Disney Junior friends will be hitting the road in a parade with dynamic drummers and dressed out vehicles. And joining this processional will be, of course, uh, Disney Junior's Ariel, who will be there. Ariel, I'm trying to say that like Sebastian. And um, and this one day theme park uh, experience will be there once again, August 8th. That's going to be fun. And at Hollywoodland, <clears throat> they will be um, there will be a lot of fun. Of course, Disney's Junior's Ariel is going to be everywhere. Um, but they're I, doing an arts and crafts area. Yes. The Hollywood Backlog stage. Uh, there's going to be a sing and play along. <gasps> Uh, confection purification, uh, purification with uh, the super kitties, Perf- uh, connection perfection, not purification. I don't know why I said that. I always sound it's, it's stupid. decorating cupcakes, yes, exactly. You with see. the super kitties, don't forget about the super kitties. Super kitties are the most important part, right? I- I'm waiting for Bluey. Can I just tell you how much I'm just waiting for Bluey? I mean, I know they're not officially. Disney, but Disney has put them on the on the it's platform. Gonna happen. Bluey's got to have to happen because it's, it's happen. such a phenomenon, and how oh, much yeah. Disney merch are going to make out for Bluey? Because Kristen, tell them what we got the kids for their birthday. Our, our daughter, come on, we got our daughter the Bluey house that has the pool, and it also has the um the barbecue set. Has the barbecue set with it? Oh my! Uh, it has the car. The car. Oh wow! It's awesome. It has the the healer family truckster, which is awesome. Wow, that's incredible. And, and it has like their schoolmates. And it and has tons so of characters. Not with only it. do we have the house and all that stuff, but earlier when when you know several years ago when they started watching Bluey, we got them the this um uh, I got them a schoolhouse. The schoolhouse. You know, and so now they have all their little school friends and everything. So we have like all the play sets and all the Bluey character figures. It's it's a Bluey home after all. Amazing. We just need the camper. We do need the camper. Yes. <laughs> and, and John Luke. Um, this is how much we're into Bluey, guys. Well, you know, Bluey, they're doing meet and greets at D23. <sighs> it's only a matter of time before they're in the park. I think that this D23 meet and greet is a test. To see what the appetite is oh. at this sold out event of Disney freaks like us. And if it's successful, which I do not doubt that it will be, we're going to see some Bluey in the parks. I don't even know why you need to test it, to be quite honest, because Bluey merch is blowing up. Bluey is everywhere. When Bluey, when the voice adults actors are, are watching Bluey, when yes, when adults are starting channels and when and, and the voice actors are on Jimmy Fallon and it's such a huge a huge thing uh, it's unstoppable hey do you yeah. remember this um this news tidbit that they covered when i think there was a bluey pop-up restaurant that was not even affiliated with it but you know how they have these artsy pop-up restaurants <gasps> in mm-hmm. las vegas and they, they said do that here promise, yeah they they said that they would promise a bluey meet and greet and they were actually getting complaints from parents because they thought for real like a blue was going to be there but it was actually a dude in a bluey hoodie what? Yeah. <laughs> it was in Las Vegas of all places. And it's like, how can you have this bluey restaurant, you know, serving all the bluey food um, and not have a bluey character, but you have like some guy in a freaking bluey hoodie. Woof. I know. There, I mean, there was going to be a riot, I'm sure. They did an Alice Wonderland one here, and I heard it was amazing. <sighs> but they do, problem. yeah, anyway. Nashville has plenty of those too. Well, not only do we have super kitties, <laughs> but uh, I know, Kat, you're going to talk about the, the other Pooh, characters. There you go. Doc McStuffin, Sophia the First, and more. I wonder if they're going to break out uh, Elena from Avalor out of mothballs. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Elena's great. I think they should also bring out Vampirina. Oh, Vampirina, bring it, bring Vampirina 
and uh oh uh what is the other disney junior show that the kids love so much um jake and the neverland pirates oh jake and the neverland pirates and mira the the, the oh detective. yeah mira. mira and the royal detective oh come on let's do it our kids yep. just love disney junior can you tell because now we're like rattling out. If you were to ask me like four years ago what these DNC Junior shows were, I could probably tell you Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah. And then now it's I like, do <laughs> like Vampirina. <laughs> but oh. Bluey, I really enjoy because it's it is very smart. It's very smart. There's there's things that are like adult and their adults there. pick up on that kids wouldn't really like get what's going on, you know? You, like with the sister. Anyway, do you do you watch Bluey Cat? No. You should. Oh, once yeah, I'm you sure start, I, I'm so sure I will start watching it, it as soon as it's time for Leo to start watching it. You could literally watch everything in a night because they're like seven minute episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, season three is fifty episodes. Oh, that's true. Okay, it might so. take you a weekend. Anyway, um, <laughs> we probably need to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Extended fun <laughs> at Downtown Disney District. Great. So beginning August 4th through the 11th at select locations, there will be special offers for guests that present their D23 event badge or their D23 membership card. Um, the event, of course, as we have mentioned, is uh, sold out and maybe you can't attend the event, but you can still uh, enjoy these offerings that include many dis many discounts um at various places so yes discounts we all like discounts mm. Love it. well uh let's see oh uh guests can purchase tickets for a special happy hour event that is taking place at naples restaurante e bar and that's going to be on August 9th and the 10th from 3 to 5. So it's a good way to meet other people who are big D23 Disney fans. And you can enjoy uh, selections of unlimited bites. It's only $28 a person. That, that's cheap, y'all. For unlimited bites, count me in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from August 9th to 11th. Also, Disney Junior Let's Play Party Fun will continue uh, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And that will be the Downtown Disney Live Stage. There'll be a high-energy DJ uh, that will be featuring Disney Junior music. Upbeat live performances featuring favorites uh, from Disney Junior characters. There's going to be a bubble show inspired by uh, Ariel. So you've got that to look forward to. Preschoolers can also enjoy the... Um, they have a play and create together with crafts inspired by live performances and Disney Junior's Ariel. She is the star of this and Disney Junior. Event. There's going to be merchandise. So you got that, including why supplies last a create your own headband. Whoa! And that will be at Disneyland Resort at the Mad Hatter on Main Street USA in Disneyland Park and Bing Bong Sweet Stuff and Pixar Pier at Disney's California Adventure Park. Nice, love it. Well, how about so, them apples? Lots of fun. Yes. Hmm, what kind of headband would you create? For me? Mm -hmm. Uh Well, if it's not a lover boy headband from like 1988 or like a Daniel San Miyagi-Do headband, I'm out. <laughs> we know mine would be all about food. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd have to. I think I'd have to go the. Um, I don't know I could go the Star Wars route. I could. I could do the Star Wars headband. I could wear a. I could wear a headband, maybe a Leku, like uh, you know, like Ahsoka. I could do the male Leku. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. How about you, Cat? Um, I don't know. Probably like what I normally wear, like flowers and plants and stuff. 
that's right. Maybe like a tiki room themed one. Ah, uh, you'd be like the uh, the eye of defeat, defeat. Yes. Right. <laughs> I can't even say it right. <laughs> the heart. The heart of Tafiti. The heart of Tafiti. <laughs> I don't think you want to be the eye of Tafiti. <laughs> eh, whatever. I have Tafiti. He's underrated. <sighs> All right, let's wrap this show up, y'all. We hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. If you haven't, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a like. <laughs> it's too me. late. I'm to blame. <laughs> there we go. Send your hate mail to Al John. <laughs> okay, do that. <laughs> If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You could also give us five star reviews. We love those. Also, share. Please, please share. All these old things, they help the algorithm. It makes us happy. And really, that's important to us. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can also support us by going on to what, Spotify or wherever you choose to listen to your podcast and become a supporter there. You can also head over to diningatdisney.com or in the show notes below, you will see the links for Amazon, Disney Store, Kingdom Strollers, and Garden Grocer. Out one. All right. You can find us on all the socials, of course. We're there, mostly on Facebook. Give that a shot. Uh, check out the show archives at diningatdisney.com. You can do that. You can find me on Instagram at John Go, and also my other podcast with former Disney creative director and award-winning author Dave Foster. It's called Skull Rock Podcast. If you love Disney and pop culture, whatever is streaming, what's in theaters, and the Disney renaissance with the actual filmmakers, animators, and musicians that made it happen, listen to the show for all that great content and interviews. Cat. You can find me on Instagram at catastrophe at C A T underscore A S T R O P H E. And you can listen to my podcast, eat the pictures wherever you listen to podcasts. If you haven't already join our Facebook group, dining at Disney and check out our friends, the Disney dorks in the social radio fun zone. Sorcerer Radio can be found at srsounds.com and of course on their beautiful app. Until next time, I've been Kat. That's been Chris and Al John. Bon appetit. Information and opinions expressed in this podcast are for entertainment and informational purposes. All other trademarks mentioned are the property of their respective owners. 